Joe. Uncle Joe. Do you know where Uncle Joe is? Where, where? Show me. Found a new place to snooze? Yeah, you never would have found me if it hadn't been for that four-legged fink. <laughs> well, come on. Let's get the rocker out of there. I haven't finished my researching. Researching? Trying to find out if the elevator's livable in case the hotel ever gets filled up and we have to rent it out. I don't think we have to worry about that. Well, I guess you're right, or the kind of reputation the hotel's been getting. What do you mean by that? Well, Kate, if you don't know, I'll be the first one to tell you. Would you mind telling me? Now, don't take this personal. But your cooking is driving people away. Oh, is that all? How can you keep so calm about it? Uncle Joe, I don't know what it is you're trying to tell me. But whatever it is, would you chop some wood? You hit the nail right on the head. And your head's going to be next unless you chop some wood. Hey, what's the sense of cutting wood for that stove when that's what's ruining your reputation? There is nothing wrong with that stove except it needs some wood. Hey, it's nice of you to stick up for it when it's what's ruining your cooking. I haven't had any complaints about my cooking from anybody, including you. Well, that's because there ain't no Lucius J. Penrose. Lucius J. Penrose. How did he get in this conversation? Oh, well, he's one of them gourmet type of eating experts. Uh, so naturally, I just brought him up. Would you chop some wood, huh? Kate, what would you do if he dropped around for a sample meal? He isn't dropping around. Yeah, but suppose he didn't caught you with that stove. Kate, take my advice and get rid of it. That stove works, and whatever works stays around here, and what doesn't work doesn't stay. Any questions? Yeah. Where's the eggs? Hey, Charlie, where is Harry Mule? Harry Mule? That's where this stamp is from. That's an airmail. <laughs> you mean they sent it airmail all the way from Harry Mule? That's a United States airmail stamp. Then how come we're carrying it by train? We get in a lot of trouble with them pilots. It goes by airplane to the county seat airport and by bus to Hooterville and from Hooterville to the Shady Rest by train. Well, how about that, Charlie? If it wasn't for our train, they couldn't carry the air mail. Your pressure's dropping, Floyd. Roger. You're over and you're out. We're going to fly air mail. We got to talk air mail. <laughs> We brought the mail. Good. Where is it? In the words of the United States Post Office, neither rain in the sheets or a broom on the right can put stays in your appointed ground. 
just delivered the letter, not the Gettysburg Address. Was that the Gettysburg Address? <laughs> Two cents, do. Oh. There you are. I'll take it. It's for Kate. Lucius J. Penrose. Is that who it's from? Now, ain't that a coincidence? It sure is. How you know? Joe just said it was. <laughs> Kate mentioned his name not more than a half hour ago. You mentioned it. Well, I knew it was somebody's coincidence. <laughs> Who's Lucius Pembroke? Penrose. He's a famous gourmet. Oh, how about that? Do you know what a gourmet is? Of course. What is it? You tell him, Joe, and I'll see if you're right. <laughs> Well, a gourmet's a fella that can tell fried chicken from fried rabbit without counting the legs. <laughs> right. Thanks for bringing the letter, fellas. Wait a minute, Kate. What does he say? Nothing. Didn't he say anything about accepting your invitation to drop out here for a sample meal? Then you did write to him. Oh, well, I might have dropped him a line, mentioned your cooking. What for? You said it was terrible. Oh, don't listen to him, Kate. What does he know? He ain't no gourmet. No, he can't count. Hey, you know what'll happen if Lucius Penrose puts his seal of approval on your cooking? You'll be famous. Why, well, eaters from all over will flock to your table and stuff themselves with your Lucius Penrose approved type of cooking. I don't need Mr. Penrose to approve my cooking. No, we approve it, and we're two of the biggest eaters around. Aren't you, Charlie? <laughs> Thanks, Floyd. Hey, what them two freeloaders say don't mean nothing. But if Lucius Penrose eats your cooking and puts his sign out in front of the hotel, you're in. Hey. Kate, I figure the sign will go right here. What sign? Uncle Joe invited Lucius Penrose to eat here. The man that writes that famous newspaper column recommending restaurants all over the world? Yeah, your mother's going to get recommended as soon as she puts in a new stove. There's nothing wrong with my stove. <coughs> oh, Mom! Mom, there's something wrong with the stove! <laughs> oh, my goodness. Trouble. It also takes care of the supper. <laughs> What's wrong with the stove? Well, it seems like something's stuck in the flue. Smells like an old boot. How'd you know? <laughs> Whatever's stuck in there, I mean, I mean, whatever happened, it's a good thing it happened before Lucius J. Penrose got here. Well, that's the man that you dictated the letter to me that you didn't want to tell Mom that... <laughs> I know all about it. Yeah, well, now all we have to do is get this stove out of here and make room for the new one. What new one? Well, you're going to buy one, ain't you? No. Okay. You can't cook a meal for Lucius J. Penrose on top of old Smokey. I'm afraid I'm going to have to. I can see his column now. The hearty man ate a condemned meal. Look at you, even if I wanted to buy a new stove, there wouldn't be time for me to order it before Mr. Penrose gets here. Well, it'll be here. What? Hey, I, I, I don't, don't know how to say this, but... Uh, I ordered one. <laughs> For somebody that didn't know how to say it, you said it. How could you order a stove I'm with just it? trying to help you. Yes, and every time you do, I end up screaming for it. <laughs> well, what kind of stove did you order, Uncle Joe? Never mind that. How much is it going to cost? Oh, it ain't very expensive. How much isn't very expensive? About a uh, dollar a week. That's not bad. 52 weeks. Oh, that's not bad. Seven and a half years? No, that's bad. <laughs> Kate, instead of worrying about the cost, you should be thanking me for my foresight in ordering it. Uncle Joe, would you mind explaining something to me? How come you were able to order a new stove in time for Mr. Penrose when you didn't know that this one was going to conk out? Well, I, I guess it was just another one of them coincidental coincidences. <laughs> I trust everything met with your approval, Monsieur Penrose. I'm still alive. <laughs> Is there anything I can get you? Yes, the chef. Call Robert. Oh, this will be such an honor for Robert to meet the great Lucius Penrose. I'm sure it will. Monsieur Penrose, did you enjoy the duck l'orange? Thank you for identifying that mess for me. I thought it was the mystery meal. <laughs> did I like it? <laughs> Monsieur Penrose, Monsieur Penrose, Monsieur Penrose, oh, not your 
your sign, Monsieur Ben Rose. <laughs> What's wrong? Well, I gotta stop a stove. A stove? Can't you need a new one? Sam, could I please use your phone? I want to catch Floyd and Charlie before they leave Pixley with it. Uh, help yourself. And you take three eggs and separate the whites and fold them into the batter, and then you... Hello? Hello? Who's there? It's Kate Bradley, Selma. Well, hang up. I'm talking. Where was I? Oh, yes. You take the batter and let it set. Selma, please, this is an emergency. So is this. Maud's expecting company and she has to bake a cake. Look, if you just let me use the phone for a minute or two, I have to stop a stove. <laughs> From doing what? <laughs> I haven't time to explain now, Selma, so would you mind hanging up? All right, but this is one hang up you owe me. <laughs> Sarah, would you, would you get me the Pixley station? Uncle Joe, if that stove gets here. Now what's all this fuss about a stove? Oh, I did Kate a favor and ordered her a new cook stove because the old one was smoking. Oh, maybe there's something stuck in the flu. Well, what could get stuck in the flu? Well, I don't know. Oh, by the way, Joe, those new rubber boots you ordered ought to be here any day now. <laughs> rubber boots? Hello? Oh, are you sure, Sarah? Well, okay, thanks. Pixley Station doesn't answer. What time is it? Three o'clock. They must have just left on their 12 o'clock run. All days to be on time. Uh, maybe we can catch them before they pass Ben Miller's. Of course it's good. I've been making this for years. It's my own private recipe. Selma, that's my recipe. I gave it to you. You did not give it to me. I certainly did, Morty. That's my recipe. <laughs> Maude, don't pay attention to her. Kate Bradley, you have no right to eavesdrop. Selma, you said you'd let me use the phone. Now, would you mind stop talking? Very well. Goodbye, Maude. I hope you enjoy my recipe. <laughs> Sarah's ringing, Ben. Hello, Ben. This is Kate. Has the Kate... Never mind, Ben. Hey, past Ben Miller. Kate, you've got nothing to lose by letting that stove get here. I haven't. Oh, there's a 14-day free trial on it. If you don't like it, you can send it back. Suppose I like it. And you keep it. I can't afford to keep it. Then send it back. That's exactly what I'm gonna do if I can stop that train. Well, you better hurry up. They'll be passing Fred Ziffel's any minute. Sarah? Sarah? Uh-huh. It's Kate again. Would you try Fred Zippel's big bar for me? You're not having much luck, Kate. <laughs> Why, Selma Plout, you promised to get off the phone. I said I'd get off for talking. I didn't say I'd get off for listening. <laughs> Sarah, ring it again. Fred isn't answering. Well, maybe he's out in Arnold's pen. Well, if he was, he'd answer. Arnold has an extension in his pen. <laughs> uh, Sarah? Y you better try Newt Kiley's, huh? Doesn't sound like he's home either. Keep ringing, Sarah. Hi, Kate. Hi, Floyd. <laughs> Floyd, I've been trying to head off you and Charlie. We got your new stove on the train. Swell. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Well, that's okay. Oh, I better let Selma know she can use the phone. And then when she couldn't get Fred Ziffel, she tried Newt Kiley. And Sarah rang his number and rang it and rang it. <laughs> I was going to put a piece in the paper about this. By the time it comes out, it'll be old news. <laughs> I should have sent it back. You've got 14 days. It's going to take us that long to put it together. There's more of it? Well, these are the instructions. I don't need any instructions. Look, why don't we call Harley Smith and let him put it together? He's an expert on stoves. Now, why pay him good money? I've been around stoves as much as he has. Yeah, but he works around stoves. You just sit around them. <laughs> Take flange A. Flange A. Flange 
flange A, insert flange A into slot C on side one. A into C on side one. Take connecting coil B. Connecting coil B. Coil B. Insert coil B into lower heating unit G1. B into lower heating unit G1. Nothing to this, Kate. What's next? Wing nuts, seven, eight, and nine. And the bolts, one, two, and three, connect to the plate F with the three tiny holes. <laughs> well, that does it. How does she look? Well, she looks like she does in the picture, but she's tilting. <laughs> looks like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Maybe you're only supposed to cook Italian food on it. <laughs> what do you think, Uncle Joe? Uncle Joe? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What's cooking? Get me out of here. Well, back to the drawing board. <laughs> factory made a mistake and put in too many. What do we do now? All you gotta do is plug it in and start cooking. Oh, no, thank you. Here, you put it in the socket, Betty. I'm too young. Afraid, huh? Here, you show them, Kate. Uh-uh. You show them. Maybe you were right about calling Harley Smith. <laughs> plug it in. Book. I don't have to. All you have to do is strike match A and light candle B. Joe? Oh, was oh, that you, Harley? Harley ain't here yet. Kate said for you to keep pumping. She ain't finished cooking supper yet. <laughs> What's she cooking? I don't know, but you'll be eaten by candlelight. Ain't that romantic? <laughs> Uncle Joe! <laughs> you know, it's a good thing this happened. Good training for the contest. What contest? The Mr. Hooterville contest. What's that? No, it's the old Miss Hooterville contest. Oh, you mean where they give a prize to the girl with the best legs? Yeah, they found they didn't have enough girls for the contest this year, so they shifted it to the men. Oh, you think I could enter? <laughs> <laughs> legs like those, they'd laugh you out of town. Oh. Of course, with a little exercise, you might stand a chance. You think so? Sure. Too bad you ain't got a bike. You know, they're talking about $50 first prize money. $50? $25 a leg. <laughs> you don't know why I'd get a bike, do you, Joe? No, I'm afraid not. Hey, wait a minute. I ain't eligible. They'll probably want me to be the judge. Well, can I borrow your bike, Joe? Well, I don't know. Please. Well, what's a friend for if you can't do him a favor? Uncle Joe. How am I doing, Joe? You've just started. Don't expect miracles. Where are you going? Up to fill out your Mr. Hooterville application. You're a real friend, Joe. Is that the best silver we've got? From the Waldorf. That's the best hotel in the county seat. Ain't you gonna put no flowers on the table? Oh, Mom's dusting the carnations. The roses are better. The wax melted. Uh, where, where's the finger bowl? Mr. Penrose is coming. Uncle Joe, why don't you go and put on a tie? Hey, the train's coming. I heard it. Did you want to put on a tie? Well, of course I'm good. <laughs> Doggone, my muscles sure are sore. How come you let Joe euchre into riding that bike five hours? He didn't euchre me. I wanted to. Ain't that beautiful? <laughs> Enjoy your trip, Mr. Penrose? It was delightful. What were you before you ran this train, a kamikaze pilot? <laughs> a 
And incidentally, about an hour back, there was an uncommonly smooth stretch of rail. Don't you think you ought to report it? <laughs> Ain't me a nice fella. <laughs> Uncle Joe. Now, girls, remember, you serve from the left and take from the right. Why? Are you superstitious? <laughs> Attention. I am Lucius Penrose. <laughs> Mr. Penrose, on behalf of the staff and the owners of this establishment, I welcome you to the Shady Rest, home of the fine cuisine and good cooking. Where food. is the dining room? <laughs> Good grief, Louisa May Olcott and the Little Women. Uh, uh, Mr. Penrose, uh, this is Kate Bradley, the woman whose cooking is the principal feature of the Shady Rest Hotel, which you're going to put up a sign up in front of. Uh, and furthermore... Uncle Joe, would you please stop talking and say something? Those are the most sensible words I've heard since I arrived. When do I eat? Right this way, Mr. Penrose. This is the dining room? Yes, sir. Does the Smithsonian Institute know that you stole their furniture? Now, look here, Mr. Pinnose. Penrose is the name. Well, whatever it is, if you weren't my guest, there are a few things hey, that I can... talking to Mr. Penrose. That's all right. I find it rather refreshing. Oh, no, don't sit down. Why, is there something on the chair? No, I, I want you to see our stove. He isn't interested. Oh, I'm sure he is. You don't see stoves like that up in the big city. Oh, I'm sure he has. Well, I'm sure he ain't. Oh, no, no. My back has taken enough suffering from that train ride. So shall we see it now? <laughs> there she is. What is this? That's my stove. Your stove? But how sad. How very, very sad. Sad? What do you mean, sad? That's the best stove you can buy for a dollar a week. Listen, what a price to pay for civilization. Mrs. Bradley, for the past 15 years, every meal that I've had, every bit of food that I've eaten has come from a barren, faceless, mechanical monster like this. That's why when I accepted your invitation, I was hoping for a real old-fashioned meal, cooked as only good food should be cooked on a slow-burning wood fire. Well, if that don't beat a boot and a flu. <laughs> Uncle Joe, get the axe. If Mr. Penrose came here for a wood-cooked meal, that's what he's gonna get. This soup is fantastic. There's only one way to cook with wood. I'm awarding your mother the Lucius Penrose seal of approval. Well, you taste Mom's fried chicken. Bring it on. Ready for the fried chicken, Mom. Coming up. More wood, Uncle Joe. Oh, Kate. I gotta get that pressure up to 160 because I'm gonna bake muffins next. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.